Hi everyone, welcome to the Bioinformatics School channel. In this video, I am going to show you how to install and set up MultiQC on a Linux system. So, for those who don't know, MultiQC is a tool that allows you to aggregate results from different bioinformatics tools, okay, into a single report. So, if you want to read more about MultiQC, you can check the documentation here, or you can check the software developers page, which is here, alright, and you can read more. So for this tutorial, we are going to look at how to install and set up on a Linux system. So visit this page. The link to this page is in the description box. Now there are different ways of installing. For this tutorial, we are going to focus on the use of pip, which is this one here. Okay, so you have to use pip to install MultiQC. So this assumes that you have Python installed and you have pip installed. So just make sure you have pip installed on your system. Right, so if you are using a Linux cluster, then chances are that pip is already installed, so you don't have to install pip. So we are going to use this approach to install it. So let's get started. So first of all, let's open our terminal. And then let's proceed. So if you open your terminal, right, let me just enlarge it a bit first. So if you open your terminal and you type MultiQC to tell you command not found. It's Ubuntu, it will also give some additional information like I am seeing here, but that's fine. What we are going to do is to now install MultiQC. Right. So I'll clear the screen, I'll install. So to install using pip, you just have to say pip install MultiQC. Now, in some cases, Due to permission issues, Linux, you may have to add dash dash user to. But for me, this one works, so I'll use this approach. So let's install MultiQC now. So if you start running the command, it will download all the necessary packages for you. Now, as it's downloading and installing, let me also say that pip is a Python package manager. That means it is used to install Python packages. All right, so. If you have Python packages you want to install like NumPy, Matplotlib, etc., then pip is one utility that you can use to install and set them up. So we are using pip to install MultiQC because MultiQC behind the scenes run Python. All right, so that's what we need to note. All right, so installation is almost done. So we just have to wait for it to get completed. All right, so let's wait whilst that's it work. So, if it's done, as we are going to see now, you will see some text being displayed. All right, so some of them are warning signs, let's say warnings, some of them are also notifications. But there's something I want you to take note of. You see this path that keeps on coming, you will see yours, yours is likely to be different by minus slash home slash tests slash dot local slash bin. So, take note of this path. Right, we will need this information. So take note, you can write it somewhere. Just put it somewhere. Let's see, I'll just open a text editor and then I'll put it there okay, for reference sake. So this path, just make sure to save it somewhere. We will come back to this. Now, when you use pip to install, it will try to install in your home directory. So in your home directory, you will see there will be a directory called .local and then in it, all the stored packages will be in there. So dot local is a hidden file, so you will not see it if you use ls. Right? But it's there. So let's take note of this. So once this is done, okay, it's fine. Let's open a new terminal or a new tab. We will come back to this tab, but let's open a new one and let's work from it. So if it's installed, great. Now uh, let's type MultiQC. If you type MultiQC, then it should give you some form of output. Or if you say MultiQC dash dash version, it should show you some inputs. Okay, I even said it's MultiQC dash dash version. Let's use this one. It should show you some output, but it tells us that MultiQC is still not found. But on our terminal, where we installed it with pip, it shows everything has been successfully installed. So why is this happening? It's happening because we need to add 
the installation directory, the directory where the files have been installed to our environment. Right? So because we are yet to do that, still bash things multi-security installed, so it can't be found. So we need to work on that. Let's clear the screen and then let's proceed. So to work on that, we need to add this path this to our environment and there's another path we have to add. I'll show you everything step by step, so no need to rush. So first of all, let's do this. You see slash home slash test. Yours is likely to be different. You see dot local. You see bin. But for now, I want us to focus on just this up to dot local. So let's get back. So first of all, see this your home directory. Let's make sure we are there. And then just do echo dollar home. So when you do echo dollar home, you are going to see your home directory be displayed. So it's going to be the same as what you saw during the installation. So what you saw, okay, mine is slash home slash test. Yours will be different probably. So what you saw, just do ls slash home slash test. That's your home directory slash dot local. Just do something like this. So when you do it, you are going to see some directories displayed for you. One of them is bin. That's what we saw here. And we also see another one, lib. We also have this other ones, etc and share. For this tutorial, we are going to focus on just the bin and the lib. These are the ones we need. So let's start with the bin. So I will say ls slash home slash test slash dot local slash bin. We will see some files there. So we need to add this to our environment. So we need to add it to the path. If you have been following my tutorials on how to install bioinformatics tools, I always add some paths. Okay, I add some directories to my path. So we are going to do something similar. All right. So when you are here, just add this. Okay. What we will do is to say nano. We are going to use nano to edit our dot bash rc file rc file this is what we are going to get and add a path all right but first let's make a backup of this dot bash rc file it's also a hidden file so if you do ls you will not see it there but it's there do ls dot bash rc to get display it's there it's hidden that's why we have dots so first of all let's make a copy of it it's going to be a backup file so that if there's the need to reverse back to the old bash rc file we can do that so let's say cp dot bash rc let's say bash rc dot back need to just make a copy now we can edit the dot bash rc file so i'll say nano dot bash rc instead of nano you can also use vin i or you can use vin m vin i m or any other text editor for that matter right so at this stage it's a matter of preference but i prefer to use nano because it's straightforward I just like it so i'll say nano dot bash rc when i open it right, let me just go over again nano dot bash rc now open it when you open it i'm going to enlarge it it when you open it you see something like this so what i want you to do is to scroll down just scroll down scroll down scroll down to the very bottom of that page so you will see some empty space just hit enter continue to hit enter for some time so you have quite some number of spaces now let's start with the first one so we are going to add this so we will say export path equals then we will add this path to remember we also copied it over here we also even it ls dollar home etc so what we have we are adding so export path slash home slash test slash dot local slash bin so the slash home slash test yours is likely to be different if you are still not sure with that one still just do echo a home it will show your home directory so this one is what you use the slash home slash test in my case yours is different so that's what you use here the slash home slash test and then add 
slash dot local slash bin and then add dollar colon first dollar path okay, so colon dollar path so that's what you do i'll try to also paste this in the discussion box for you as well so that's the first stage now the next thing is to add the lib directory when we did ls slash home slash test slash dot local we saw some other directories we had lib etc share we are focusing on lib so do again slash home slash test slash dot local slash lib you will find another directory here which is python 3.10 here yours is likely to be different but whatever you see there just maintain it so again i'll say ls slash home slash test slash dot local slash lib slash python 3.10 i see python 3.10 that's why i'm using it yours may be different if it's different use what you see what has been displayed for you so ls into this directory and you'll find another directory called site packages in the site packages directory is what we need so i'll just again say ls slash home slash test slash dot local slash lib slash python 3.10 slash site packages it's i'll just ls to see all these stuffs all right we don't need all these things what we need is just this path this one here the absolute part this what we need so when we go back to our dot bash rc where we are editing yeah, there's another tab by the way where we are editing just say export python path everything should be uppercase export python path equals and then you add this there so mine is going to be slash home slash test slash dot local slash lib slash python 3.10 slash site packages this is going to be my path let me just confirm so that's what i see here so after that you add colon and you say dollar python path because if the python path has already been set we want to add it to it all right so this is what we should have now once this is done just type control x hit enter that is done right so now let's open a new tab a new terminal let's open a new terminal don't close this one yet let's just open a new terminal so it can even mean a, a new tab so click add a new tab and once you click new tab when the terminal is open if nothing is displayed that's good that means we are on track everything is okay if something has been displayed then please make sure to go back to your bash rc file then undo whatever you did there then redo this command now if nothing is displayed that is great so we can proceed so what we have to do is to type multi qc just type multi qc when you type it you are going to see this coming up that means that now multi qc is available it's in our environment so we can use it anytime you want you can also say multi qc dash version it will show you the version that means everything is fine so congrats for reaching this point we need to test we still need to test all right so what i want us to do is to test with an example data set all right we are testing with an example data set all right so what we need to do is to do this come to this get report of mine okay all right so i'll leave the link to this report in the description box we are going to test with some input files so here you see this file mapping starts step or enlarge a bit see this file here i repeat the link to this report is in the description box so here click it this mapping start or zip click it when you click it you will get to this page 
when you are here come to the right side then download so to download you see this button here this downward pointing arrow this button so click it when you click it it's going to download for you if you are working on a remote cluster a linux cluster where you don't have access to a browser then you have to use the link so come to this button which is labeled raw r-a-w so this button right click and go to copy link i do it again right click and go to copy link then go to your terminal at this point it can be any new terminal that's fine just use this and i'll say wget and i'll paste the link there after pasting i'll hit enter to download this file it's done it's a very small file so i'll clear the screen do an ls and i should see mapping starts.zip I will now unzip it using the unzip command. If it's unzipped, if it's successful, you will see the content displayed. That's what we see here. I'll do an ls and I'll see the mapping starts directory. I'll ls into it and I'll see some files. Now, these files, these are mapping statistics that I generated using the sum tools flag starts command so i have a detailed tutorial on that by the way so if you're interested you can just watch it for this tutorial we are only testing multi qc so we will just proceed so to test with multi qc we will say multi qc mapping stats slash star dot txt so let's run this command so when you run it multi qc will start running and then to show you the files and automatically detect that these are flag start reports so you see found pre flag start reports we have the output a folder here or directory which is labeled multi qc data this contains input files that multi qc generated to generate to create this reports for us I repeat this directory contains input files that multi qc generated in order to create this html reports here for us. we have data we have reports now let's go and check this out on our file manager at first clear the screen do an ls and you are going to see the directory multi qc data multi qc reports so let's go to our file manager check it out we are going to visit the folders or directories so mine is here there's the multi qc data directory. there's the multi qc html so that's what we need so Click on this to open with your browser. So it has been opened. So if it's open, you should see this. You should see something like this. See this. When you come to volume plots, you will see something like this. Click on table. So once you see this, that means that everything is okay. But QC has been installed and it's working perfectly. So that means your installation has been successful. Right? So once you are done with this, then you can now try to aggregate your reports to multi qc and do your interpretation i have other tutorials on multi qc so just check the link you'll find the tutorials there as well so i'll see you next time